I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is Heroes Arise, the streaming media broadcast that equips, encourages, and empowers you to arise as the hero, warrior, and champion that God created you to be. You matter. You are important. You've got a key role to play for the kingdom here on earth. So thank you for joining me again this week so we can continue to pour into you. And hey, I'm sorry we didn't get a show to you last week. Bluntly, I got hit with a really nasty bug. I'd been traveling and traveling. I went from one country to another country, then from one coast to another coast. Wasn't getting much sleep, one event to another event. I just got a little run down and I got hit with a bug. But you know what? Even if there's a reason, even if we can look and say, oh, here's how I got run down and here's how even in the natural uh, uh, a bug got in. Sickness is never our portion. So I want to start this week, even before I tease the topic and we go into the prophetic word I have for you guys. I want to start this week by praying against sickness. You know, I've heard people say, oh, it's allergy season. I've heard people say it's cold season. Sickness is never our portion. Jesus Christ paid the price through his stripes for us to not only be saved, but there's also healing in salvation. There's healing in the forgiveness of sin. There's healing in everything he did for us. So zoed us body, soul, and spirit. So right now, in Jesus' mighty name, anywhere sickness or disease is coming against you, I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every virus to be broken off of you. I command infection to be broken off of you. Sickness, disease of any kind, be broken off. Allergies go now in Jesus' name. Sinus is clear in Jesus' name. Colds, be removed in Jesus' name. And let's go after some big stuff. Cancer, be removed. Tumors dissolve right now in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that diabetes is being broken off people even as they watch this. Pancreases be healed. Blood sugar levels normalize in Jesus' mighty name. There's nothing like just jumping right into the miraculous, right, guys? And I want you to know this is what you're made for. Remember what we've talked about. This isn't the topic of this week's show, but it's important. When the Apostle Paul said, in the Holy Spirit, we've been given the gift of the working of miracles. Remember, that word working is energeo or energeo, and it means to be active and to be mighty. And the key to be mighty in the working of miracles is to be acting in the work, active in the working of miracles. So get out there and break open that miracle realm by praying for the sick, praying for the lame, praying for the deaf, praying for the blind. Jesus says you're to do the works that he did and even greater works. So let's get after those greater works. Hey, be sure to post in the comment section or email uh, info at and let us know your testimony. If you got immediately healed when we prayed for you or if there's other things that you're overcoming, whether it's allergies, whether it's a head cold, whether it's uh, 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 been diagnosed as something that can't be cured, whatever it is, I want to be praying for you. We are going to grow mighty in the working of miracles. We're going to become even mightier than the first century church because we, the modern day church, are going to be active in the working of miracles. Just Jesus said, go forth and declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he's saying that we are to declare that knowing that it's our hand that he wants to release the kingdom through. Amen. Amen. Okay. So this week, what I've got for you guys, I've got a prophetic word. I had an encounter with the Lord about a week and a half ago, and he spoke a prophetic word to me that is part promise and honestly also part warning. So I'm going to give you that word, and then we're also going to unpack it. But just before we get into that, I've got a couple quick announcements for you. First of all, I want to make sure you know about the uh, Woman on the Frontlines Global Conference, the 25th anniversary celebration global conference that's coming up in Nashville, May 4 through 6. This is really exciting because it's uh, um, featuring key voices, lots and lots of key prophetic and apostolic voices that have been a part of women on the front lines over the last 25 years. And I've been invited to be a part of this. And I've been in many of these women on the uh, front lines conferences and gotten a lot out of them, poured a lot into them. One of my favorite being when I got to be part of the one at Angelus Temples in Los Angeles several years ago, Amy Semple McPherson's church. It was an incredible 
weekend of meetings. But there's going to be Patricia King, James Gall, Cindy Jacobs, Stacey Campbell, Clarice Fluitt, De Havilland Ford, Katie Souza, Joan Hunter. I could go on and on and on about the amazing lineup of apostolic and prophetic speakers who will be decreeing, releasing, and imparting to you and empowering you. And one of the cool things is, is they have asked me to come and do breakout sessions for men on the front lines in the afternoon. So guys, we're going to have special sessions just for you. So this is actually a women on the front lines and men on the front lines events. That's in Nashville this May 4 through 6. And I'll put a link in here where you can go and get more information and register. It's going to be a huge gathering and you want to be a part of it. One of the other things I want to make sure you know about is we've got our eight decrees to heal the nation that we've put together and updated a little bit because we're coming back into political season, election season. And I'm not here to get political on you. I'm here to get kingdom with you in the midst of all the politics. So we've got eight scriptural based decrees to heal and restore and bring our nation back to God. And once again, have our nation knowing the Lord and serving the Lord's plans and purposes. This isn't about a candidate. This isn't about a party. This is about partnering with heaven to see God's kingdom come and his will be done in our nation, especially in the midst of the political season um, when the enemy tries to divide and tear us apart, even in the church. So it's never about a candidate. It's always about the kingdom. So do me a favor. If you're interested in praying these eight decrees with us you can do them every single day it's very quick you can make the you can make the decrees very quickly in about a minute maybe even less you can make these eight scriptural based decrees um, the scriptures they're based on are all there, but you can also do what I do. Some, some days I make the decrees in faith and other days I linger with the Holy Spirit and let him highlight things from each of the decrees to go deeper into and focus more on, on behalf of God's plans and purposes for a nation. Now we've made this up for the USA, but you know what? You can use this for your nation as well, because God's promises are yes and amen for every man, every woman, every child, every place, every nation. God brought forth all the nations and has a plan and purpose for each and every one of them. And these decrees will help you pray and contend on behalf of your nation for the fullness of God's plans and purposes for your people and your place that he's blessed you to be a part of in this hour. Speaking of nations, last quick announcement. I want to invite you to consider partnering with us to become part of our GO team, sending us to the nations. The harvest is ripe right now, and we are getting invitation after invitation to go to the nations to bring the truth and power of Jesus Christ and the gospel to Asia, Southeast Asia, to Europe, to political hotbed nations. And our desire is to be able to fund all of this because it's like the Macedonian call. In the spirit, you can hear these nations and these people crying out, we want Jesus, bring us the gospel, bring us the kingdom in power so that souls are saved, so that other believers like you are empowered and arise as one of God's difference makers and solution bringers in their nation. So I'm asking you to prayerfully consider going to roberthodgkin.com, clicking the giving link, and joining our Go team by partnering with us to be part of God's solution in the nations. You can make a one-time tax-deductible gift, but I'd love it if you would consider partnering with us every single month. We're believing for a thousand new Go Team partners that help us respond to this Go Ye call, this Go Ye opportunity to the nations. Because we're only in the, just we just finished the first quarter of the year. What is this, April or, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, April 1st? We're only in the first quarter of the year. And already nations all over the world are crying out and saying, can you come, will you come? Bring revival, bring the gospel, bring salvation, bring healing power. Come and empower us to go out and see souls saved, to see our nations impacted. You can help make that happen by becoming one of our Go Team partners and being part of God's solution. So go to roberthodgkin.com, click the giving link, and I thank you so much for your one-time gift or your ongoing partnership. All right, with that, let's get into this week's topic. I told you, I had an encounter with the Lord in my prayer chair about a week and a half ago now, and he gave me a word. It was a very short word. It was a very simple word. But you know, when God speaks something, we can, we can not only hear it, but we can kind of linger and 
uh, press into it and he'll always unpack what he's saying. There's always more depths to mind in when God speaks a word. So I want to share the word with you. It was very simple, but then we're going to unpack it because when I heard the Lord say it, I lingered with him and he gave me scripture. He gave me um, a deeper meaning and he unpacked this word. This is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, in this hour, my people will be a David or, and it just trailed off. And as I sat and I thought, oh my gosh, in this hour, God is saying, we, we are going to be one thing or the other. And as I sat with him and let this linger and pressed into it, hearing it again and again and again, in this hour, my people will be a, excuse me, my people will be a David or I knew in this hour, he meant this season of warfare that we're in. And we're in a season of warfare right now. And that's nothing to be afraid of. We've talked about this a lot. It's something we need to be aware of, not afraid of. Seasons of warfare are not seasons when the enemy is winning or the enemy is advancing. It's actually Kairos moments when God is entrusting us as his dominion stewards, his representatives and representers, his kingdom agents of impact here on earth to take territory on behalf of the kingdom. We've talk, talked over and over again about how we're in the midst of not just an Isaiah 60 season, but in this warfare season, we're in the midst of Isaiah 60 opportunity. And that opportunity is verse two. We have the opportunity to behold the darkness on the earth and behold the deep darkness on the people, not be afraid of it, not be frustrated by it, not duck and cover or ignore it or be apathetic or throw up our hands in bitterness, offense or irritation and say, I'm done. I'm out. I'm sick of it. No, he wants us to behold it because we're here to deal with it. That's why after he says in Isaiah 60 verse two, behold, his instruction is to behold it, to see it like a sniper, be able to see and target what the enemy is doing. Everything the enemy's doing right now is simply him overplaying his hand. It's no different that when Goliath strutted up and down before the people of God, before the nation of Israel, openly mocking the people of God and openly mocking God. You, we, we can easily see the giants in the land, the giants of unrighteousness, the giants of perversion, the giants of lies and manipulation and fear. There's powers and principalities running amok right now, and, and we can see the fruit of their works. We can see the darkness that they're up to, the deep darkness they're up to, and how they're trying to advance that. But we're to behold that because we're here to deal with that. God says, behold that darkness. And the next thing he says in verse 2 of Isaiah 60 is, for the kingdom of God will arise in you. The glory of the Lord will appear upon you and nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. When we behold the darkness and we realize we're here with God, we are here as part of his solution. We are here to make a difference. We're here to behold and target and deal with that darkness in his power, by his authority, to his glory, not by our might, not by our power, but by the Holy Spirit. But we are here to deal with it. When we get that, then all of a sudden we're not afraid of the darkness or irritated by the darkness, we see the opportunity to advance the kingdom and to deal with these things. Wherever the enemy comes in, God, like a flood, like a breakthrough flood, will raise up a standard against him. He just needs someone to partner with, just like David in 2 Samuel, what is it, 5 or is it 2 Samuel 6? I think it's 2 Samuel 5, right at the end of 2 Samuel 5, where David says, you are the Lord of breakthrough. Because all the enemy, when, when David's anointed king and the enemy sees he's coming into a new level and all the enemy now wants to come against him, David sees all that, sees what the enemy's doing, see the enemy overplaying his hand. He doesn't get freaked out. He turns to the Lord and says, Lord, what should I do? Should I go against them? Will you, will you give me the victory? And God gives him instruction, gives him the breakthrough. And David says, you're the Lord of the breakthrough. That's who we're supposed to be right now. We are to be a David. But here, that's the promise that God is saying, you're one of his Davids. Son, daughter, if you're in relationship with God, you are his solution. You are his difference maker. You are his dominion steward. You are his kingdom agent of impact. And he is saying in this season, I promise you, if you'll partner with me, you will be one of my Davids. You will be one of the giant slayers. You'll be one of the ones who deals with the powers and principalities that are being exposed. You will be one of my mighty champions. It doesn't matter what your past was. It doesn't matter if um, um, you haven't done that in the past. God is saying in this hour, 
you have the opportunity to be one of my Davids. But here's, here's the sobering part of the word. When he said, in this hour, my people will be a David or when it lingered, when it just, when it just sort of faded out, I realized the or meant you'll either be a David or you'll be one of the ones, one of the people of God, one of the army of God cowering on the sidelines. Because that's what the army of God did. The, the people that God had in place to deal with the threats against the kingdom, to deal with the threats against the people of God and the kingdom plans and principles in the earth, they were cowering on the side. And listen to this. I'm going to go to uh, 1 Samuel 17 here. Let me see if I can find it. Where is it? Um, thump, thump, thump. It is when David comes and Goliath is strutting up and down, mocking the people of God. As he was uh, talking with them, he saw Goliath, the champion from Gath, come out from the Philistine ranks, shouting his challenge to the army of Israel. And all of the army of Israel is saying, oh my gosh, have you seen the giant? That it's, as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? So all of Israel is cowering on the sideline and it's their job to deal with the threats but they're not arising as champions they're actually allowing the darkness in the earth as it was to take them out to sideline them they are choosing to cower on the sideline because they're focused more on the giant more on the enemy more on the power principality more on the darkness and the depth of the darkness than they are on their god and how their god wants to use them but david he just decides to go up against the giant. He doesn't cower. He says, all right, great. I'm here. God's here. Let's deal with this thing. So in this hour, we're either going to be a David or we're going to be one who is allowing the darkness, the powers, the principalities, the giants, the problems to sideline us. Either we are going to stand up and be part of God's solution, or we have to understand whether we do it consciously or not, if we're not standing up with and for God on behalf of the kingdom, standing against the powers and principalities, the darkness and the deep darkness, praying against it, getting God's strategy for how he wants to use us in different ways, then we have to understand that there's only two options in a warfare season. We're either working with God and, and, and working with him to tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Like Jesus says in Matthew 16, once you know who I am and once you learn to listen to my father and what my father is revealing to you as opposed to what the world is saying or what your how your flesh is reacting this is the rock that i will build my church upon and no gate of hell can prevail and i am giving you the keys of the kingdom so you can loose from heaven loose into the earth anything that's been loosed from heaven and bind in the earth anything that's been bound from heaven he's saying once you know who i am and once you listen to the instructions of your heavenly father, the word of your heavenly father over what the world is saying or doing or how your flesh might speak or react to those things, but you listen to the instructions of the father, you become the gate of heaven into the earth and no gate of hell can stand. Anywhere there's a stronghold, I've got you. My father has you because of me, because of my Holy Spirit that I've given to you, because I've restored you to relationship. You're now the one who will tear down the strongholds of the enemy so no gate of hell will prevail. In this hour, in this season of warfare, we've got to catch this. We're either going to be a David or we're going to be one cowering on the sidelines. We're going to be one not doing our job. We can't cry out to God and say, God, do something. He wants to do something. He wants to do it in us, with us, and through us to see the giants in the land torn down. So we need to catch that we're either going to be a David well, we're going to be one who's cowering on the sidelines. If you don't like that word cowering, okay, I get that. But we've got to understand from heaven's perspective, we're here as the army of God in the earth. Yes, he's the Lord of hosts, and there's angel armies to come alongside his plans and purposes with us and through us. But he has always had a people in the earth that he could work with, work through, work alongside of, and use for breakthrough. And he wants to make you a David in this hour. And if we say no to that, we've got to catch that we're actually not doing our job. We're actually allowing the enemy, the darkness, fear, frustration, irritation, bitterness, offense, hardness of heart, judgmental, whatever it is 
to we're allowing that to sideline us in such an important and strategic hour. So we're going to be a champion who's mightily of God, or we're going to be one who's sidelined by the enemy. And that and it may not be directly by the enemy. It could be what the enemy stirs up on us. Like I said, irritation, bitterness, offense, fear, frustration, anxiety. But we're not showing up. We're not showing up to deal with the darkness that we're seeing and that we're aware of. So here's the good news. And what I love about you, you, my people will be a David or is we've got to remember, especially in 2 Samuel 16, 17, who David was, who the world saw David as. Yes, that um, uh, uh, Samuel had come and anointed David as the king, but he was still a shepherd boy and a musician. He was he was not seen as a great and mighty warrior so much to the point that when he shows up at the battlefield, his older brother makes fun of him. Saul dismisses him and the enemy mocks him. David doesn't let any of that touch him. David doesn't say, oh, you know what? I'm just a shepherd boy. I'm just a worship leader. What can I do? Or I'm just a musician on a hillside, maybe not even a worship leader. You know, what can I do? No, he says, God, what do you need me to do? We in this hour, no matter what we've been or what our past has been, we have the opportunity to arise as a David, to be a champion used mightily of God. Or we're going to be one who avoids the battle, not doing our job. And what is our job? We've talked about it for the better part of two years now. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. One of the core foundational truths God has been relaying and reestablishing in his church. That when we say yes to Jesus, not only are sins forgiven, not only are we made holy so we can receive the Holy Spirit, and have union, communion, friendship, and fellowship with our Heavenly Father and all of His kingdom here on earth. Not only are we given the gift of the Holy Spirit and restored to relationship through the forgiveness of our sins and we'll go to heaven one day and get eternal life, um, but we're also restored to the plan since day six to be God's dominion stewards in the earth. It's our job. All this stuff that's happening is happening on our watch. Now, God is with us. God is for us. God has equipped us and God has empowered us. But we are here to take care of all the things that we are seeing. Once again, in his authority, by his power, to his glory. Not by might, not by our power, but by his Holy Spirit. But we're here to deal with these things. So, um, I also want to remind you, you know, I said a lot about with, with it doesn't matter what's gone up till till now. Like if you've been dismissed, if you've been ignored, if you've been overlooked, or if you realize, oh my gosh, I have been one that's let irritation, frustration, uh, apathy take me out. I've been, I've been overwhelmed by the last few years. I'm just sick of it. I don't want to look at the darkness. I don't want to deal with the darkness. I just want to avoid it all. If that's been who you are, it's okay. It's just now it's time to shift. Now it's time to shift. Now it's time to realize that no matter how things have been, God has great and mighty purposes for you in this hour. Remember, even with a power and principality like Jezebel, who was it who actually ends up taking Jezebel out and casting her down? Yes, it was Jehu the king coming and riding and rallying and, and showing, right? Modeling, right? But ultimately, who cast Jezebel down for Jehu to trample under the hooves of his horse? It's the uh, eunuchs. Those who have been dismissed as impotent and unimportant. Do you feel like that maybe you? Do you feel like maybe um, uh, uh, people have not seen you in the fullness of your gifting? Do you feel like you've tried to step out in things in the past and it hasn't either been received or gone how you thought it might? Do you feel like maybe you've been dismissed as impotent or unimportant? Certainly, we could look at spheres of influence. We could look at administrations or politicians that see no value in the church, no value in believers, might call us nasty names. They could dismiss us as impotent and unimportant, but we've got to remember that in this hour when we're going to be a David, a mighty champion of God who takes out the giants in the land, who partners with God, knowing who our God is and knowing who we are in, with, and for our God that this is our opportunity. So it doesn't matter if we've been dismissed as impotent and unimportant, if we've been mocked, if we've been ignored, if we've been fought against, if the enemy sent everything he can against us, this is the hour to shift and say, my king is riding, just like Jehu was riding. My king is reminding me who he is and who I am. And it's my time to rise up, to be a hero who arises. Heroes arise. This is the hour. This is the hour, men of God. This is the hour, women of God. This is the hour, people of God, for us to arise because we can be a David or. So um, your past doesn't matter. What you do now matters. 
David was so dismissed. You know, we, we, we were talking about how it's the one who was dismissed as impotent and unimportant that actually cast down a power and principality like Jezebel. But look at how David was dismissed. David was so dismissed that when Samuel came to anoint one of Jesse's sons as king, Jesse didn't even think to call David in from the field. He just brought the other seven boys, you know, and said, it's got to be one of them. And when Samuel's like, nope, 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 nope. I don't know if that was seven nopes or not. I lost count. But when he does the fullness of the seven nopes, he says, there's got to be another boy. He says, well, there's the youngest one, but he's a shepherd boy. Call him in. Isn't it interesting? David was the eighth boy, eight, the number of new beginnings. I am telling you in this season, it's a new beginning for you. If you've been enjoying victory and success after victory and success, hey, it's a new beginning. You're going to a whole new level of authority, impact, reach, influence, victory, success, triumph, and spoils on behalf of the kingdom. But if it's also been a season where either you felt worn out or or tuckered out or um, just, just put out or dismissed or ignored, this is a new beginning for you. You can be a David in this season. Just be aware if you don't choose to arise with God, for God, and in God as a David, he wants you to know that it's a warning. It's David or in this season. It's either arise as one of my mighty champions and let him show you how he wants to use you, where he wants to use you, and what he wants to use you to do. Because for some, it's going to be different assignments. Some might be called right into the political realm or the media realm or or the government realm or the education realm or who knows. You might be called to run for office or you might be called to you might be given decrees, scriptural decrees that the Lord wants you releasing out into your nation, out into specific spheres of influence to see the, the light break forth, the kingdom come, his will be done. He's got a plan for you so you can arise in this hour. Even if you've been dismissed in the past like David was dismissed or the eunuchs who cast down Jezebel were not even not even acknowledged, dismissed totally as impotent and unimportant. What matters is what we decide to do with and God, with God and for God right now. So with that in mind, as I sat with the Lord and kept and kept pondering in this hour, my people will be a David or I started to think about this and I picked up I, at one point I picked up my Bible and I was reading through second Samuel uh, 17 to look at what David did, how David responded. And in that God started highlighting for me what David's do in seasons of warfare in huge kingdom opportunities when there is the 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 kairos moment to partner with god and heaven to see powers and principalities targeted and torn down so i want to quickly go through what david's do but also take a look at what david's don't do because what david did is really important but what david didn't do is also very very insightful that's going to help us in this season so let's look at what david's do David's know who they are, even if nobody else does. David knew once he was once he was anointed by Samuel as the king of Israel. David knew that he'd been that God's hand was upon him. David knew that he was carrying something on behalf of the, the king in the kingdom. He didn't need anybody else to acknowledge it, so much so that he was happy to go out and go back to tending the flock. He was happy to go and serve in Saul's court as a musician to help drive tormenting spirits from Saul. He didn't show up and say, Saul, I got news for you, man. Um, God has anointed me as king. Your day is done. Get out. He didn't, he didn't uh, murmur, complain. He didn't bitterly accuse. He didn't curse. You know, we've talked before about God highlighting the book of Daniel to me for this season, specifically in dealing with wicked rulers, wicked systems, and wicked administrations in these wicked days. One of the things God highlighted to me so much is how uh, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. And they always spoke to him honoring the office, especially when, when uh, believing to bring one of God's solutions or honoring God in the midst of all that. They didn't murmur. They didn't complain. They didn't curse. They didn't, they didn't do any of that. And we've got to grow up a little bit in the church. We're doing that a lot with politicians we don't agree with, Christians we don't agree with. It's time to start stop tearing each other down. I'll get to a little bit more of that later. Um, but what we really need to do is know who we are so we can show up in any way God wants to use us. 
you know, we might think, okay, God is calling me to be a David in the earth. That means that I need to go to a nation and start doing crusades and seeing millions of people saved. And I need to go and I need to prophesy over world leaders and give them kingdom strategies to bring their nations into alignment or curse them if they don't. Hey, God could use you that way, but I can't emphasize enough. Whatever he wants to do, he's going to use you powerfully, but you need to let him show you what to do. David knew who he was. You need to know who you are. David so knew who he was and knew who he was with and for his God and so trusted his God and God's process to bring him into the fullness of what he was there to do. He was happy to serve as a shepherd. He was happy to serve as a musician. And he was happy to serve as a uh, non-heralded warrior to slay a giant when no one else did, would. So it's important that you know who you are. It's important that you know you're God's son. It's important that you know you're his bride. It's important that you know you're his beloved. It's important that you know he has equipped and empowered you for this hour. It's important that you know you're his dominion steward, that you're his solution bringer and difference maker. It's why we say those things over and over and over again here on Heroes Arise, because we want you to know not only who your God is, but we want you to know who you are in, with, and for your God, because champions of God know who they are. They not only know who their God is, they know that he's the Lord Almighty, the Lord invincible in battle, but they also know who they are. So the first thing as a David that you're going to arise as God's one of mighty champions, you must know who you are. The second I just touched on, you must know who your God is. It's very important that as we're beholding the darkness, as we're seeing the wickedness, as we're seeing the unrighteousness, as we're seeing all the things that are going on, all the unjust, unfair, unrighteous things that are going on, not just on a national or state or local level, but I know so many people dealing with so many attacks that are unjust and unfair. It's really important in this hour that we know who our God is, that we know he's the Lord Almighty, that he's the Lord invincible in battle, that we know he is the God who always, always, always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Doesn't give us triumph. He gave it to us at the cross. He's leading us into triumph. David knew that. He went running at Goliath declaring, today my God will conquer you and I will kill you and cut your head off. David not only knew who he was, he knew who his God was. He knew his God. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how big your weapons are. I don't care who you've threatened and how much you've, you, you, you've caused them to cower. I know my God. I know who he is. I know who I am. I know who my God is. And he will conquer you. How dare you, you uncircumcised Philistine? How dare you come against the plans and purposes and people of God? That We got to let God stir that up in us. Not so we're saying that to a politician or an administration. We're, we war not against flesh and blood. We war against powers and principalities. Pick your least favorite politician, your least favorite, most lying media person. They are ultimately not the problem. Satan and his minions are the problem. Now, they might be knowingly or unknowingly in league with those dark powers, but we don't want to fight them. We want to fight for them. We want them to be set free and come into alignment with righteousness, too. We want to see the giants in the land, not the giant people, the giant powers and principalities, the enemies of God that are Satan and his minions. We fight against them to see them torn down. So as David's, we need to know who we are. We need to know who our God is. I'll also say it's important to know what our God is like. Remember the prophetic warning that I shared with you guys that God gave me near the end of last year. There was a three-part prophetic warning. And one of those warnings was to watch over our hearts towards God right now. Because in the midst of beholding the darkness, in the midst of beholding the storms of the enemy that we're here to deal with on behalf of the kingdom of God, the Lord was warning us to make sure we watch over our hearts because Satan always wants us to pull away from God because he knows God will never leave or forsake us. And just like in the storm where the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that we are drowning? It wasn't that they were questioning his power, his ability to do something. They were looking at the storms and the challenges and questioning his heart, questioning that he cared, questioning that he was involved, questioning that he was in the midst with them. We've got to not only know who our God is, we need to know what our God is like. And our God is good. And our God is faithful. 
and our God is trustworthy. And we need to know that, especially when we have no idea what he's doing or what he's up to. Because then when we know God is good, we go to him expecting his goodness. We go to him knowing he'll have a good plan. He'll have a, he'll have a, a, a good way to encourage, to equip, and to empower us for the season that we're in. So David's know who they are. And David's know who their God is. And David's know what their God is like. David's take the time to equip themselves correctly. David's take the time to strengthen themselves in the Lord, especially when things are difficult, unfair, or unjust. Remember at um, uh, 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 the end in 1 Samuel 30, I think it is, when David and his men come back to their camp and it's been looted and plundered and they've lost everything. And David's men turn on him and even want, they want to blame him. They want to, they want to stone him. They're really mad at him. It's really unfair and really unjust because everything they've lost, they've only had because of, uh, they've only got in the first place because of David. They were nothing until he equipped and empowered them as heroes to arise. Um, and in, But instead of him saying, hey, this is unfair, this is unjust, how dare you guys blame me? I've lost everything too. David went and strengthened himself in the Lord. David went and took time to get uh, 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 healed, equipped, strengthened, um, comforted by God, but also to get God's strategy. He does the same thing when going up against the giant Goliath. He goes and 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 uh, Saul gives him his armor, but David puts it on and goes, you know, first like, yeah, this makes sense. This is proven army. This is the king's armor. This armor has worked in battle after battle, time after time. Yeah, let me try that on. But then when he tries it on, he realizes, wait, this isn't for me. This is an hour not only to let God strengthen you, but to let God focus you and to let God show you how he wants to use you, how he wants to equip you. David knew the best thing to do was to shrug off all that stuff that wasn't for him. He wasn't, he wasn't to wear the kingly armor yet. He was to be, he was to wear the warrior armor and he was to do it from the place where he's known his God as a shepherd because he knew his God who slayed the lion. He knew the God who slayed the bear and he knew that God would be with him even with a giant. He picks up five stones. That was the right thing for that battle. He had grace. Five is the number of grace. He picks up five stones. He picks up the grace of God for that battle. So it's important that even even if you had armor that's worked in the past and weapons that worked in the past and, and approaches that worked in the past, that may be what God wants, how God wants to use you in this battle. But it may not be. Like, it doesn't say David slayed the lion and the bear with stones and a sling. It says the God who was with me when I slayed the, the lion, the God who was with me when I slayed the bear, that God is with me today and we will slay this giant. So focusing on who his God is, focusing on who he is, but then he allowed God to give him the strategy and equip him for this battle for this hour. So it's important that you take the time to let God equip you and strategize you correctly for what, how he wants to use you. David's reflect on past victories and expectations of future ones. I touched on this already. David said, look, God was with me when I slayed the bear. God was with me when I slayed the, the, the uh, a lion. He wasn't saying, so I'm only anointed to protect the sheep. He said, no, God has given me victories when I have done what God has asked me to do and, and what he's put in front of me and served, served knowing who he is, knowing who I am, now I'm going to serve with him. The God who's given me past victories is going to give me this victory. But again, knowing God would give him the victory, he also let God speak to him about how to step into the victory in this hour. And then the other thing David's do, they address the problem head on. Once they see the darkness, they go at it. They, they, once they see the darkness... And they get God's strategy. They go at it head on. David goes right at Goliath. God, Goliath is mocking him. Goliath is mocking him going, what are you, a boy with a stick? That's what you send against me? And all David says is, today my God will conquer you and I will kill you and cut your head off. How dare you, you uncircumcised Philistine, come against the army of the living God. David goes right at it. 
David doesn't cower. David doesn't sideline. David doesn't um, uh, do anything, but he goes at the issue, knowing who he is, knowing who his God is, knowing he's been equipped for victory, and he goes right at it. We need to go right at the darkness and the deep darkness that we're perceiving in our nations, in our cities, in our states, in our families, in our finances, in our relationships, in our health. Go right at them. That's why even starting this broadcast is like, yeah, you know what? I got hit by a bug, but I'm not even going to suffer a head cold. I'm going right at it. I'm praying against it. I'm praying against yours. We're going to see sickness bow everywhere we go, just like we're going to see unrighteous and darkness bow because we're going to let God equip us for this hour. So what do Davids do? What are you going to do in this hour when you're going to arise as a David, as a champion of God, as opposed to being one who allows the enemy or situations to sideline him or her? You're going to know who you are. You're going to know who your God is. You're going to know what your God is like. You are going to take time to let the Lord strengthen you, give you strategies, tactics, blueprints, and battle plans, and to equip you for the battles you've been blessed to be used by God and see victory in. Reflect on past victories in expectation of future ones. And you might say, man, I can't, I can't think of a time I slayed a lion or a bear or anything like that. You know, the victory I always go back to, even if in a moment I, I forget some of the amazing things I've si seen God do with me, through me, and for me all over the world these past 20 years, I think about my salvation. You can always reflect back on your salvation and think, oh my gosh, talk about a past victory. God defeated hell and death for me. God defeated sin and hell and death and the demon and the devil and all of his minions for me. That God who loved me so much and gave me this incredible victory, even when I didn't know him, wasn't seeking him, wasn't searching for him. How much more will that God be with me and for me, guide me, guard me and lead me into triumph in this situation. So reflect on past victories and future ones and then address the problem head on. No, that you've been given the victory through the finished work of the cross, through the empty tomb, through restored relationship, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ask God the strategy and then go right at that enemy, declaring truth and, and operating in who you are, knowing who your God is. All right. So that's what David's do. That's what you're going to do in this season. When the opportunity to be a David and the warning not to be one who allows what's going on to sideline us. But let's look at what David's don't do, which can be just as important as what we do do. Um, and I've touched on a little bit of this, but let's go through it. Here's some things David's don't do. They don't murmur. They don't complain. They don't waste time partnering with the enemy by attacking those who are not showing up. Notice how when David shows up, even when his brother, his, his big brother El Eliab or Eliab makes fun of him, he doesn't attack back. Notice that when David goes out into the battlefield, he doesn't mock, make fun of, or flame on social media all the, all the army of God who isn't showing up. He's not telling everybody what they're doing wrong and how they're doing it wrong. He's not, he, he doesn't step into a ministry of fault finding. He doesn't step into a ministry of finger pointing, which there's too much of that going on right now. The easiest thing to do if you don't agree with a brother or sister's approach or theology is just unsubscribe, unfollow, or mute. You don't have to partner with the enemy, partner with the accuser of the brethren and start attacking. Davids don't do that. Davids attack the enemy. They don't attack brothers and sisters, even if brothers and sisters aren't showing up or aren't doing it right. So um, Davids don't murmur, complain, and they do not waste time partnering with the enemy by attacking those who are not showing up and doing their job. Davids let, don't let others... They don't, oh, sorry, I, I couldn't understand my own writing. Davids don't let anyone other than God define who they are. And, he, and remember again, when David shows up, his, his big brother says to him, what are you doing here? Why aren't you out with your little flock of those few sheep that you look after? He wants to define him as you're just a little also ran shepherd boy. You shouldn't be on a battlefield. You shouldn't be here. You have no place being here. Notice David doesn't say, all right, then do your job. You're supposed to be the army of God. Get after it, man. So he doesn't murmur, complain and attack. He doesn't point fingers, find fault and accuse. But he also doesn't let um, those he's in relationship define him in a negative way or those who are accusing and attacking him. He doesn't let that land. He doesn't even give heed to it. Then he also doesn't let Saul uh, define him, even as king, even as person's authority is like, 
boy, I like your moxie, but you're just a kid. He, Goliath's been a champion and warrior since he was a child. You are just a child. You don't stand a chance. He doesn't let those, the, he doesn't let people, he doesn't let authority figures define him. And he also very much doesn't let the enemy define him. Because when he goes out in the battlefield, remember we said this, Goliath says to him something like, you're sending me a boy with a stick? What is it, a joke? What am I, a dog? A boy is going to chase me with a stick? I'm going to have this done uh, in a minute. This is going to be nothing. So the, the enemy's trying to mock and belittle David and define him as just a boy with a stick. David's don't let anyone other than God define them. Not even David's circumstances. David didn't look at his circumstances and say, all right, I was just anointed king of Israel, and now I'm a shepherd boy. I was just anointed king of Israel, and now I'm serving the guy who's the hand of God has come off of as king, and I'm his worship. I'm, I'm, I'm a musician in his court. No, he knows who he is, and he carries that into every assignment God brings him into. Process is so important. All the process that you've been through, and that's challenges, that's that's difficulties, that's that's having to trust in God, lean into God, remember God, all the things we're talking about. Those are all things God has used to bring you through the process to prepare you for this moment in history where he's going to empower you arise as one of his great heroes and champions in the earth to tear down strongholds of the enemy, smash through gates of hell and see giants in the land defeated. This is the hour for Haman's to be hung on their own gallows, Goliath's heads to be cut off with their own swords and Jezebel's and Ahab's to be cast down by those who have been, been dismissed as impotent and unimportant. God spoke that to me almost two years ago now. And I believe that that's only increasing and accelerating and you are a part of seeing that happen. So David's don't let anyone other than God define who they are. And David's do not embrace formula as opposed to embracing God. In other words, they don't embrace uh, what, uh, what's worked in the past. They embrace God and embrace what God has for them right now. Like I talked about, you know, Saul's armor worked in the past. Saul's armor had worked for a king in many, many battles. It was proven. It was tested. It was, it was proficient. It was powerful. Yet when David put it on, he didn't embrace the formula of what's worked in the past. He also didn't embrace the formula of what's worked for, for him in the past. He didn't take what slayed the lion or slayed the bear other than taking his God with him and knowing God was taking David with God. He let God show him how do you want me? How do I partner with you in this moment to slay this giant? David embraced relationship with God. He didn't embrace formula. He didn't embrace the past. So that's what David's do. That's what David's don't do. Because in this hour, God is declaring to each and every one of us who is the body of Christ, who is the army of God, we will be a David or we will be one of his mighty champions slaying giants tearing down the strongholds of the enemy, defeating powers and principalities on behalf of God's plans and purposes, or we will be ones who allow the darkness, the deep darkness, the unrighteousness, frustration with it, irritation with it, being overwhelmed by it to sideline us. And that's not who you are. That's not your portion. You're one of God's mighty champions. You are a hero arising. So I hope this prophetic word, the promise of it, and also the warning of it and how we unpacked it has really encouraged you. I hope it's equipping you and I hope it's stirring you to be God's solution, be God's difference maker, because that's who you are. And that's what he has for you in this hour. Thanks so much for being with me. Don't forget the, 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 uh, uh, Frontlines Global Conference, 21st anniversary celebra celebration in Nashville with so many incredible anointed uh, prophetic and apostolic voices who are going to uh, impart to you, who are going to ignite and inspire you to help you arise as the difference maker and solution bringer you are. Join me and all of them in Nashville this May 4th through 6th. Don't forget, if you want a uh, copy, I'll get you a PDF copy of our eight decrees to heal the nation. Um, I can get those to you. Just email me, robert at roberthotchkin.com, and ask me for that PDF from me. Um, it's from Robert Hodgkin Ministries, Patricia King Ministries, and Michelle Burkett Ministries. We partnered together to bring these to you. And then last thing, I'm really, really grateful for those of you 
who are willing to partner with us in these incredibly strategic days to become part of our go team, to be part of God's solution, to partner with us on an ongoing basis. Because even one of those thousand new go team partners who help us respond to the Macedonian call, go to nations all over the world to bring the power and the truth of the gospel, to see souls saved, to see believers discipled, and to see more launched out into the harvest field as God's difference makers and solution bringers, just like you. God bless you guys. Thanks for being with me this week, and I'll see you back here again soon for another Heroes Arise. Ready for more? Go to roberthodgkin.com for more teachings, more resources, and more information about Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Front Lines.